Welcome back to Lost Odyssey, everybody. It's Chocolate Milk, and today we're going to be taking care of the final optional area of this game, and it by far gives people the most nightmares, I think. It is the hardest dungeon in the whole entire game, and it is a nightmare, so I'm just gonna get this place underway, I suppose. It's just due south of the Pirate Fortress. You need to break through the ice like you have been doing with every other area. And it looks very similar to the Great Ancient Ruins when you come up. So you just have to kind of find the entrance. I think it's over here. There we go. This is the Temple of Enlightenment. And those of you who have played this game are probably cringing right now because you know what you're in for. And if you haven't played, then you're about to see what we are in for. And as you can see, it looks very similar to the Great Ancient Ruins as well. And this place is home to powerful spirit magic. And because Mac has spirit magic, he, I guess, feels the, the runes calling him. So this can only end poorly. Before you go in, make sure that you have the Enchanter's Mask from the shopkeeper in the city of Simon, because you're going to need it at the very end of the dungeon, and it will save you a whole trip. So we're just going to get this place underway. I suggest having something like Angel Guard on all your immortals that will protect against any and all status effects. I suggest having a quad element amulet or a quad element charm on your characters to either nullify all elemental damage or to reduce it or better yet if you have charms that will absorb attacks such as water earth fire i would also suggest putting that in your skill slots with all the stuff that we've been getting we've pretty much got a lot of stuff that gives us more slots for your immortals and then just switch in your mortals accordingly because one battle in this area will literally get you one level up. I think I am about level 58 right now, and you'll see at the very end what level I am, and you'll just you'll get a good idea for what it is exactly that I'm talking about. So there's two treasure chests to get on the outside of this area. Just gotta ride around. I'm just trying to think about what else I would suggest. Uh, crystal Fragment, well, the one that we got in the second Grand Staff that will give you auto MP recovery at the end of every turn. I would suggest that as well because you're going to need a lot of healing and a lot of really powerful black magic spells. And then, your, and then whatever else you feel like it, your best equipment in terms of physical attackers and things like that. You can never really be too prepared and if you are really, really, really under leveled or really having troubles, what I would suggest is just staying in this area here so that you're so that you're nearby the save point so you can fight and then leave the area, come back with full MP and HP and then just keep saving as you level up. So we're going to go into the first area. This is the Square of Eternity, and as you can see, it's also a puzzle, which just makes everything so much better. Yay! And just because I think, for those of you who haven't played the game, just to give you an idea of what it is I'm talking about, I'll just put in a battle here and you can see what it's like. There's quite a few creatures in here that have a lot of HP. As you can see, that one has 6,500. That's not too bad. But the White Beast has 20,000, which really is just wow. Really. So some of the monsters in here will have more HP than bosses that you fought. And I know that sounds insane, but it's true. Some of them will leave you with really, really nasty status effects. Some of them come in packs of 10, 11, 
12. So it really does not hurt to be as best prepared as you can. Pay attention to the element of the creature you're attacking. Decide on an order that you'd like to attack in and just go at it. And each battle in here will probably take you upwards of five minutes. I think this battle took me about three to four minutes, which is pretty normal. And then as you level up, it gets significantly less. But when you first come in here, battles take you a while. And I've even got Seth's best weapon on her and she's still not doing that much damage. Highest level black magic, still not doing that much damage, but it does improve with time. It's a matter of being patient and just paying attention to your party. Since I've got auto recovery on Ming and Sarah, I really won't run out of MP because the ground is spelled cost 27 MP. I get about 60 or 50 back each turn, so I don't I get more MP gain back than I lose it. So at the very least, they're there if I need the healing as well. I don't have to worry about them running on MP and not being able to use black magic. guys in the back are annoying because they're gonna buff your party but they're not really the the concern I stuck with the beast first because he's got the most powerful attacks he's got shadowless and he just has a lot of HP these guys were in the great ancient runes too except they were in the form of like flame and water beasts rather than a white beast but once he's out of the picture it becomes really easy just get rid of these guys quick, fast, and in a hurry. You will see a pattern with the enemies. Like, we've seen all, th all not, not all three of them. We saw the spirit, the gate spirit guy in the Great Ancient Runes. We saw the beast in the Great Ancient Runes. And there's probably gonna be a few more that look quite familiar, but there are new enemies in here as well. And I'm not going to be showing off every single enemy in here, but if you need help with a particular enemy, you can ask me about it. But just know they're all really strong and you should be fine as long as you pay attention and keep healed. So there we go. As you can see, we pretty much easily, very, very easily gain a level up. And this will happen pretty much until you're in the 70s with your immortals and it takes your mortals a lot longer than that because your my all of my immortals have double experience so they'll get double experience for the longest time here so now we're going to actually start on the puzzle part of this which is annoying flip that red switch twice and then go down this platform. This is another area where everything looks the same and it's, it gets a little bit frustrating and a little bit difficult. But if you just look at my guide and follow it, I did get every single treasure in this area and I did it 100% completed. I was debating on whether I wanted to put like music in just like really awesome music and have that play but I'm really scared to put music in my videos because YouTube just hammers down if you use any commercial music so I decided not to do that because I wouldn't want to post these after I spend so much time recording it and editing it to just have to go back and take out all the commercial music so 
when you get to this stage up here, there's two. You're going to take the one to the right, or I guess it's more of, of a southern platform. And this one just leads to a, a chest and another platform. And I should actually put a link in the description. If you're finding my talking like distracting and you can't follow along with the guide or you just prefer to watch someone do an area like this with no commentary, I'll put a description to split pa split playthrough, excuse me, split pa playthrough's channel. Uh, he did the Temple of Enlightenment 100% completed, just like I did. I actually, I actually looked at his for reference and he doesn't have he just has awesome music in the background and he's got no commentary or anything whatsoever so if you prefer to do that i will link his channel he his lost odyssey let's play is in the feature or not the feature section but it's in his playlists near the top so that's out there if you'd like uh this four here you're going to take a right That's a lot of spinning and moving and going upside down. I think this is the, the biggest pain in the butt about this area is actually the puzzle part of it. Because the experience you get from this place is great and I think that's I think that's the best part about it because the more you battle the easier it gets. But the puzzles get annoying because you do have to redo and then undo the puzzles that you've done so all right so with that that makes four chests in this area there's only one more to grab that we'll be grabbing just as we leave so we're going to go back up to the top And then we'll take the left fork this time. I got so lost in here. I remember when I was just playing this game for my first time or my second time. I kept getting so lost and it was so frustrating. And I think I think that's why a lot of people hate this area is just because they just get so lost because there's so many platforms and different possibilities and ways that you can take but we're actually almost out of this first room here which is nice I'm I think I spent two and a half hours recording this whole dungeon just with the boss and all the battles and stuff and it, it's it's only th actually like four videos so <laughs> you can spend a really long time in here and they only give you two save points so this is going to give us our last treasure in this corner here. That makes all five treasure chests. Or six, maybe. Maybe I miscounted. It's five or six. But anyways, either way, I got all of them. So now we need to find our way out of this place. Out of this area. So go up, ignore the red block, and follow it all the way out to this door here. And that finishes up the first little area here, and now we can move on to the Persipir of Hopelessness.